So my main objective was really just I wanted to find a way to treat the webcomic I was doing like a book or a brochure outside of the actual book. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. Uh, today, I wanted to expand on the podcast that I did where I talked about the three Facebook ads that basically I've been using to kind of find people, how I was doing that, why I was doing it, and the way that I was going about it. And I focus mainly on Facebook, and today I wanted to talk about how I actually found people to read my webcomic. Now, it, and I used Google Ads. I, I was using Facebook too, but Google Ads actually turned out to be better for this one, which is surprising because Google Ads is like, I want to say the toughest nut to crack. Like you can get lots of people. I've had the experience of like, I'll get lots of views, but nothing happens with them. Like they just turn out to be garbage. So I kind of wanted to talk about different ways that I used uh, ads, Google ads specifically for my web comics. So as I said before, I talked about the different ways that I used ads on Facebook. And this was uh, basically, I used messenger ads to have people contact me, and that was to find people to be on the podcast when I first started. Uh, lead ads, which are basically people would sign up by email to get information about the podcast. So I did that so people would listen to the podcast that I recorded. And then uh, the one that I'm doing recently that I'm trying out right now, since I actually, the podcast is out there, people can subscribe on the different services. So now I'm promoting it on those different platforms by using through plays on Facebook, which is I have a short video and people who actually view, I think more than 15% of it, I think it is, uh, then those people get marked as that they watched it, which is super cheap. It's like five cents a person to view it if they go through that far. And then I take that list and go, why don't you subscribe to the podcast? <laughs> you seemed like you were interested in it. So maybe you'd like to actually subscribe to it. And that's the way that I've been doing ads for things like promoting my podcast and the website and finding and meeting new people. So this worked good for me as far as finding people to do that and also to uh, get people to my website and sign up for the email list. So all of these things. And then I could tell people about the other things I do. And if they're interested, they would respond to that or they would ignore it, which is, you know, that's exactly what happens. And that's great. So uh, that was Facebook. It was and the ads I made, they were a little more I was a little more in control of those ads like it's. They well, especially a few years ago, not as much. Well, still pretty much now. I mean, it's it's they know the interests of people and it's all on the same platform. So they know who's seeing it, what they like when they're looking at the platform. And then they go, we're going to show this to those people. So it's all in one place. So that's that's why Facebook is a really good place to start out, especially for ads. I tried the same thing on Google ads. At this point, a year had gone by. And I wanted to try some Google ads again. And the thing was, is uh, I, I wanted to promote my webcomic. Now, a year had gone by. I started my webcomic. This, this is, I'm talking back in 2017. I started my webcomic then. It actually was, I, I started the webcomic before I started the podcast. The podcast was an idea that I got later. The whole reason behind the webcomic was my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. And uh, I started drawing the comic to kind of process that for just to draw about us going through it. It was, that's how it really started. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, I mean, there were still like, it was day-to-day -day stuff. It was, some of it would just be days about like something happened that day. That's actually the name of the comic. It's called, then this happened because each day it's like, and then this happened and then this happened, which, you know, that's, that's why I called it that. But it started out with the day that my wife told me that she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And then it was every day about our lives at this point in time through over a year. So at first I was drawing about what we went through and then I made a book. I wanted to put it together as a book. Uh, truthfully, I just wanted to have a book. I saw that there was a way to publish on uh, Amazon Publishing, KDP. I, I was pun pu punishing. I was publishing on Kindle Direct and then I made this book and I was able to order some copies of it. So I had done this just to kind of get a copy of the book to kind of put it together. It's actually really big. It's, it's 365 pages. I was kind of surprised by how thick it would be. I don't know why. That's a lot of pages. So that was cool. And 
then I realized after I published it, I mean, the whole thing is, is like, you can sell it on Amazon. That's, that's what I could do. I could sell it on Amazon. Amazon has like a publishing on their publishing platform. They have ads as well. And, uh, I was able to create ads about the book, which was tough. I mean, it's, it's tough to explain in, uh, cause you have a limited amount of words when I'm making it, uh, there are a limited amount of words that you can put in the ad. So uh, I kept trying different words and copy and like explaining what it is and really why would anybody want it sort of thing. I mean, it's so I, I experimented with a lot of that and I was, I've sold, I sold some of the books. It was actually selling pretty regularly, which was cool. And I got some very mediocre reviews, which was also cool. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was literally me learning how to make web comics and just kind of trying to process some thoughts. It wasn't really like, I'm a great web comic person. No, I was just starting out and this happened to be something that happened that I could write about. So I, I, I actually was very happy to get mediocre reviews. I was expecting way worse. So that was fine, but it's hard to sell a book. It's hard to go, hey, buy this book that I can kind of tell you about. Or, you know, and, and also it's, uh, I think it's like $9.99 was how much the book was. And I was able to do an e-copy of it or an e-book of it for, I think, three fifty. dollars So those were the two price points. And that was fine. I was able to, uh, like I said, the sales were pretty steady for that. But in the meantime, I was still making the comic, uh, putting it on my site, putting it on Instagram. If you if you actually follow me on Instagram, you see that I still post it on there and I post it on the website, which those are fine too. People check them out. People like them. But it's not easy to go through and like read them or even start from the beginning. After I made the book, I was like, okay, I, I'm going to start making, or I'm going to post these to some web comic sites. There are sites that are specifically for web comics. The two that I use, I, I tried quite a few, but the two that I use that are the most popular are tapas.io and webtoon.com. So both of those are good in, they're, they're the same, but different. And they actually have um, two very different, different loyal followings. So I got a lot of traffic through that. And the best part too was putting it on these sites. People could just scroll through my comics. This, if you're watching the video, I'm doing a thumbs up, but that's supposed to be me scrolling a large phone. So that was cool. And and when I would drive people to that. So what I did was it, it's like, okay, I could start people from the beginning. And if they wanted to read more, they could keep going through and keep going through and read it page by page, just like a book. Then I started thinking, um, uh, about the fact that these sites also gave you ad revenue for people viewing your comic. So a share of the ad revenue that the site gets, you would get a portion of that too. It's kind of like the way Spotify works for musicians. It's, it's kind of like the number of people that view that day, your particular thing, then the lion's share of the ad revenue is split into those views. If that makes sense. I, I, I always start these metaphors and realize, metaphors, and I realize that I didn't think them through when I started. So hopefully that makes sense what I'm trying to say. So because of that, I was like, okay, if I beef up my revenue, if I beef up my views on these sites, then I will get more, right? What I did is I started uh, sending ads to this. I, I, I went back to Google ads because I'm like, well, the ad traffic from Google ads, the one thing I know about it is it will get a lot of views, even if they're garbage. So if it goes to the site... <laughs> <laughs> I'll at least get a lot of views on the first one and they might not scroll through to see the other one. Right. And uh, so I did that it, and I made these ads and I kind of copied what I had done for the book on Amazon. Cause I already tested it. I already had a bunch of ideas that worked and didn't work. Saw what was getting good clicks and what wasn't. So I made uh, Google ads about this and I would take, try out different pictures like the cover of the book and that, which I found out the cover of the book is actually, it's a depiction of what happened right after we found out that even though my wife was diagnosed, she had to go get it tested. And it was actually like they did the scan and it was actually there. I, I fainted in the room and everything like that. But we got back in the car. Mary Joy was very quiet. And she shouted a swear word the second we got into the car. And she doesn't even remember doing it. But that was the cover of the book. I, re I drew that scene. I recreated it. But in the book where she shouts it, I have it blocked out. It's like got the center square over it, you know? And uh, even though it's covered up, and I found this out when I was doing the Google ads, not that anybody would run into this, but just to let you know, in case this happens, uh, even if something like you put in the squiggle lines or whatever to 
replace what a swear word is, they won't let you do it. Or if you cover it up like that, won't let you do it. So every ad that I did, I couldn't use the cover or I'd have to crop out the word because they would find it out. They they actually would notice that this is what happened in the ad. So their review process is pretty good as far as that, which is funny because I see some very questionable ads when I when I go places. Like, you know, there's tons of stuff. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Just a little tip for you. Um, now, anyway, so I wanted to beef this up and I was going through the site or having, having it go to these webcomic sites and it was doing okay. Um, let's put it this way. By this time, I still hadn't really figured out Google ads. I still haven't really figured out Google ads, but I was I was way worse at it before. So the amount that I was spending was not being paid back with the amount that was coming through to the webcomic. So I kept altering it and trying to bring it down and I did eventually. But during that time period, I realized I was getting some click-throughs on the webcomic site. People were actually going through, but they would drop off sometimes pretty quick or, uh, here's what I thought about. I'm like, I wonder if, I clicked on one of my own ads. I tested it out. I went to the site and I scrolled through. And what I realized it does, especially when I was viewing it in incognito mode, so I wasn't signed in because the people going there were not gonna be signed in. And what it does, is it basically starts telling you, if you like this comic, you should go check out this other comic. And I'm like, oh. So if people were clicking through, it's going, why don't you check out this comic? And it because that's what the site does. It's trying to promote web comics. It's not just going, well, you've sent something here. Let's just show them your thing. So I realized that's a problem. It's, I mean, it's good for other comics and I'm glad that other comics are being promoted, but I was throwing money at this to try and recoup some money and I didn't really need it to go, why don't you go over here and check this stuff out too? He just paid to promote something else. You, you get what my problem is on this, I, I'm assuming. So uh, that was a big problem for me. So then I started thinking, what if I, how would I do this myself? Um, and I thought I could send these ads to my site and they could go through the comic. Problem was, is at this point, a year had gone by, I had been posting blog posts and podcasts. So there was no real way to go much like the, webcomic site to go like, read the next comic, read the next comic, you know, go through it like pages of a book. And I tried out like doing slide shares uh, where you could go through it, but those weren't really good on mobile. Uh, they weren't really optimized. So what I decided to do is I created a new site and I exported, I did an export of my site and then imported that site into another site. And I use uh, Blogger for this. This is Google Blogger. It's free to use. Every, if you have Gmail, everybody has it. Like you can create a Blogger site right away. And one of the things they have is after I created the site, one of the things it has is on the site, you can export the whole thing. It's just, it just exports it. And then when I created another site on Blogger, cause I can make as many as I want. I actually have like 30, 40 sites on Blogger uh, for different ideas that I have, which is something maybe I'll talk about in the future too. I try out different things all the time. Anyway, so what I was able to do from that point was import those and deleted those posts on the new site that I made. So all it was was web comics. So now I had a new site that I could send people to. I put ads on it. It had over like 300, yeah, 365 uh, comics on it. So it went through the whole first year. That was the thing I wanted to do. So, um, that, so I started sending traffic there. With Blogger, what I could do too is I could add Google Ads to it or Google AdSense, which is the one where I get paid for putting ads on my site. And it again, Blogger has that set up because it's Google and it's like, well, we want to make money. So you made this site. We're letting you do the site for free. If you want to put ads on it, we'll pay you for putting ads on it. And I'm like, okay, it's, it's kind of like that. I didn't really have a discussion with the interface of my site, but in my mind, that's how it went. Then what I wanted to do too, is just like a comic book or this being a web comic, but if it were a comic book, if you were paging through it every few pages, there would be something like, Hey kids sign up for this. So I took that idea as well and realized that now that people were navigating through every few pages, I would go one, uh, Hey, do you like this comic? I said, sign up for this email list and get this sent to you in your email every day. So I create in this, I created an email list that's specifically set up to email people the new page of the comic when it comes out. That way, because otherwise they'd have to keep coming back. I mean, I sent people here from an ad and they were flipping through. And if they flipped through, like, I think I did it after maybe the 10th page 
and they could sign up and go, I like this. I'm going to get some more of these. And then they'd sign up for the email list and I could send them the comic every day. So I did that. And then a couple pages later, I would go, did you know that I do an art podcast where I talk to people like web comic artists and painters and things like that? And I'd go, here's my show. So I, I had been putting my own little like promotions inside of each page of these. And if they didn't want to sign up or didn't want to go to them, they'd click to go to the next page or they'd just go, screw this, it's done. They're done. This is what really surprised me. Um, I tested a few different audiences on Google ads and I started out with... Uh, I didn't want to spend a lot and Google ads lets you really do very cheap ads or try cheap ads. It doesn't mean they're going to be successful. So I started out just $1 a day because I'm like, I didn't want to screw something up. Uh, another thing that Google ads will do is when, when I first started making ads there, it will really, it doesn't have, it seems like it doesn't have the ability to turn them off, especially if you have a price point. So right away, um, my ads will spike up to 10 times what I said the price should be. Luckily, if I set the price, it will go, oh, sorry, that's our bad. We're only going to charge you for the $1 a day. So if I do an ad going, I only want to pay $1 a day, the first day that I do it while it's optimizing for it, it will literally set it up and I'll look at it and it'll be like $15 today. And it's like, no, <laughs> don't do that. So just if you ever try out Google ads, that will happen if you want to set the price point and it won't charge you for that, but it will look like it's going to. So just just in case anybody tries it out, that because that freaked me out when I first started. So that always happens. Now, my next thing was I was spending a dollar a day and I was like, okay, I'm going to do two cents a click. So th at least that would mean I want 50 people to show up on my site each day. That's pretty good. And that is what would happen. Regardless if it's really horrible traffic that they're sending your way, it's still that many people viewing and your ad gets shown and you get paid for that ad. So it works out that way. At least that's what I was expecting. I figured that was okay to test out and we'll see if anything comes from it. So the way that I set it up as well is I did people who like web comics, I think. Uh, I don't remember the exact thing I did, but it was the kind of web traffic that I was looking for, web comic readers, people who would actually know when they get to the site to go, oh, you click the next page, much like the people that go to Tapas. I think maybe that's what I did. People who like Tapas and Webtoons, the places where I was posting it. So they would get the interface of the website that I set up, which is go next page, go next page, go next page. And then what I also did is I wanted to expand outside the US, but my comic is in English, so I can't just go, you know, show it to people in different countries and you know, it wouldn't make sense. That just seemed kind of spammy to me. So I uh, did a web search and looked for English speaking territories or primarily English speaking territories and, and put ads to those places. I don't remember off the top of my head what all of them were, but it was a good amount of countries and a big audience. So, and also people who are interested in web comics. So it was pretty cool. And when I first started running the ad, I got a lot of web traffic, which was expected. But um, I figured the first page, which was the first page of the web comic on the website, that's where I sent people to. I figured that would get the one view and then I'd get the ad revenue. Maybe people would click through to another. Um, then I started looking at the analytics. I could see the live views of people on the site. People were going through like a lot of the pages. I, this surprised me a lot and I thought it was really cool. Maybe it was just because, I mean, obviously it's the traffic that I was sending there, but people got how it was supposed to work and keep going through. Now, the best part is, is with Google ads, it really likes it when people continue to view your pages. So it was going one page, two page, three. I was the average view of people out of the 365 pages that I had on there or more because of the information I was putting in about like the podcast and sign up. Um, I was getting like 50 pages views. That's, that was fantastic to me and I loved it. So that was cool. And I got a few book sales out of it. I got a lot of subscribers out of it, especially with the, the podcast. That's actually how I started meeting a lot of the people in different countries that I've been talking to and also people who message me and stuff like that. So all of this was beneficial. I really liked it and I was getting ad revenue. It was kind of just paying for itself, which is also fine. I mean, it would make a little bit more. The other thing too, uh, this part frustrates me. Uh, I didn't realize till I signed up for Google AdSense, it doesn't pay you out until you've reached the $100 mark. 
So even though I was getting this traffic, I don't get paid until I reach $100. So that would take a while. So it's good that I was sending this traffic there. But that was that was really cool to see that people were going through the comic. And I it was just a silly idea that I got when trying something else somewhere else on a different site. And I got that ad revenue and the email signups and people were listening to the podcast. I was getting more people going to the podcast. And this was all just because I wanted to try something else. And that's why I like ads. It's a way to experiment with things without having to bother people or or find new people to bother. I don't know which way to say it, but you know what I mean? Like instead of asking people over and over again to do something, it's a way to just kind of go like, who else might be interested? I don't know. I, I, just, I just like doing these experiments and that's why I like to do ads. Uh, So I can test these kind of things out. So my main objective was really just I wanted to find a way to treat the webcomic I was doing like a book or a brochure outside of the actual book, which seemed harder to sell. Like I said, I was selling it, but it was a few copies a day. And here this was people going through it all day long, which was fantastic. So um, that's what I wanted to do. And I, I... that was all I wanted to talk about and just kind of talk about a different method that inspired me to do another thing. And maybe this will help spark an idea on other people. I hope that these do. It, it's really just me talking about things that I'm trying out in the background. And I just hope that it inspires new thoughts about uh, things that you would like to do. And so I wanted to share. And again, let me know if these are interesting. Maybe you'd like to hear more or there's something that didn't make sense or if there's something you'd like to know if I've tried, let me know. Uh, otherwise, Thank you so much for listening, uh, and I'll talk to you soon.